It would be great if we could just stick wires into pins 10 and 5 of the Arduino Uno and, along with two ground wires, connect these directly to our model railroad operations and programming tracks. But alas, we cannot, because as mentioned, the Arduino Uno can't directly produce the bipolar signals we need for DCC. In order to convert the DCC logic signals we can produce with the Arduino Uno into full DCC bipolar signals, we need to make use of a type of circuit known as a full bridge driver. And since we have two signals we need to convert, we actually need two of these full bridge driver circuits. There are a few ways we can tackle this problem. The first is to build drivers from scratch using discrete components such as individual transistors and logic gates. Of course, this really goes against my goal of minimizing the use of such components for DCC++. The second approach is to buy a bridge driver chip, such as this L298 dual full bridge driver made by ST Microelectronics. This nifty chip actually contains two distinct full bridge drivers, which is exactly what we need to operate both the main operations track as well as the programming track. But unfortunately, you'll still need to build a lot of supporting circuitry using additional discrete components to make use of the chip. That can be tricky and also is not consistent with the goal of DCC++. The third approach to building a full bridge driver is to get lucky. Very, very lucky. And it's the approach I chose for DCC++. One of the nice things about the Arduino Uno is that you can access all of the microcontroller pins from these female header slots. Of course, you can simply put wires into these slots and connect them directly to external circuit boards. However, it has become common practice to build entire circuits on small boards that have the same profile as the Arduino. More so, these boards contain male header pins that are designed to fit exactly over the female header slots. These auxiliary boards are known as shields, I suppose because they look like they are shielding the Arduino when installed. Regardless of the name, shields can be very useful and lots of manufacturers produce lots of different types of shields. SparkFun, a company that specializes in electronics for serious hobbyists and makers, offers a wide range of Arduino compatible shields. Some contain circuitry to allow the Arduino Uno to connect directly to the internet. Some give the Uno Wi-Fi capabilities. Others contain embedded LCD screens. There is even a special type of shield known as a prototyping shield that provides nothing but properly aligned male header pins and some blank space for users to create their own circuitry. If we return to the Arduino homepage, we'll find a list of some of the shields that they produce. One such shield is called a motor shield, and it's so widely used that many other manufacturers make their own versions of such a shield as well. They run about $15. One of the main purposes of this shield is to allow an Arduino to control the speed and direction of a DC motor. Two separate motors, in fact. As such, it's perfect for hobbyists who build robots and want to use an Arduino to control the speed and direction of the robot wheels. Other uses include controlling stepper motors, relays, and solenoids. How does the motor shield accomplish all of this? Well, it just happens to have at its primary component an L298 full bridge driver from ST Microelectronics. The fact that this shield has the very type of component we considered using makes us lucky, but it's how the motor shield is specifically constructed to use the L298 that makes us very, very lucky. Let's look in detail at the features of the motor shield. As before, we'll make use of a graphic representation of the motor shield since it's much easier to see all of the pins and connectors. The first thing to note 
is that the motor shield has two separate output channels, A and B, for controlling two motors, solenoids, relays, etc. That's great, since we also need two channels, one for DCC signals for the main track and one for the programming track. Second, the motor shield has an optional input to connect up a separate power supply. This is important because, as discussed, the Arduino Uno can only produce low voltage and low current logic signals, but the motor shield can be powered with a separate supply providing the types of higher voltages and greater current capacity we need to power DCC trains. The motor shield also allows you to set the speed of the motors on each channel. However, it does not do this by increasing or decreasing the output voltage. That voltage is fixed by whatever power supply we choose. Rather, it does this by using two of the Arduino Uno's six digital pins that are enabled for pulse width modulation. Remember, the Uno is sitting directly under the motor shield and all of its input and output pins are duplicated through the headers on the shield. The motor shield circuitry uses any PWM signal produced by the Uno on pin 3 to toggle the output voltage on channel A on and off. Similarly, the motor shield circuitry uses any PWM signal produced by the Uno on pin 11 to toggle the voltage of the output channel B on and off. The idea is that a user could control the speed of any motors attached to output channels A and B by programming the Arduino Uno to set the PWM duty cycles on pins 3 and 11 from 0 to 100%. Recall that the greater the duty cycle of a PWM signal, the greater percentage of time that the signal spends at 5 volts, and thus the greater percentage of time that the motor shield circuitry applies voltage to each of the output channels. The more time the power is on, the faster the motor spins. And note that although the PWM signals are only plus 5 volts, the voltage of the output channels is the same as the input voltage of our external power supply. This is how the motor shield can be used to control motors needing much more than 5 volts. And all that's very nifty, but totally useless for our purposes. We don't need to directly control motors, and we don't want to post the voltage to the train tracks on and off. We need the tracks to be powered on at all times so the DCC decoders can operate and they, in turn, will control the train motors. What's much more interesting about the motor shield than its ability to allow users to control the speed of any motors connected to its two output channels is its functionality that allows users to control the directions of those motors. It provides this functionality by linking the circuitry that determines the direction of the output currents of the L298 to digital pins 12 and 13 on the Arduino Uno. These pins are not enabled for pulse width modulation. Instead, the idea is that a user would program the Arduino Uno to separately set the voltages of pins 12 and 13 to either 0 volts, which causes the motor shield to set the current flow of the corresponding output channel in one direction, or to 5 volts, which causes the current of the corresponding output channel to flow in the opposite direction. The purpose of this functionality is, presumably, to allow a user to reverse the direction of travel of a robot whose wheels are controlled by DC motors powered by the output of the motor shield. But we can use this functionality for something completely different. What if we connected PWM enabled pins 5 and 10 on the UNO to direction pins 12 and 13 on the motor shield? Recall that pins 5 and 10 are where we are going to produce our DCC logic signals using customized PWM settings. The result would be that every time the pulse of our DCC logic signal toggled from 0 to 5 volts, the motor shield would reverse the direction of the current flowing out of the corresponding output channels. And how does it reverse the current flow? By reversing the polarity of the output voltage. In other words, the motor shield can be used to convert our Arduino-produced DCC logic signals into the very bipolar DCC power signals we have sought. And this means that the output of the motor shield can indeed be connected directly to the tracks. One channel to the main tracks and one to the programming track, without the need for any additional resistors, transistors, capacitors, or custom circuits. And that's what makes us very, very lucky. Believe it or not, there's even more good news. Not only can we use the motor shield to create bipolar signals from logic signals, 
but the motor shield also has built-in circuitry to monitor the total current being drawn by its two output channels. It does this by converting current sensed in each channel into two small voltage signals. These voltage signals are linked through the male header pins into two of the Arduino's analog input pins A0 and A1 at the bottom of the board. We can therefore program the Arduino Uno to read this voltage, which in turn tells us how much current is actually being drawn by the tracks. Monitoring track current is important for a few reasons. First, it allows us to track the efficiency of our trains and determine if we need a bigger power supply. Second, it allows the Arduino to continuously check for short circuits that might occur if a train got tripped up on the frog of a turnout or a piece of metal fell across the tracks. And third, it allows us to program the Arduino to detect minor changes in current draw from the programming track, and that is the standard DCC mechanism to read the CVs of decoders in our engines, which means that we can reproduce all of the functionality of a commercial DCC base station using an open source, off the shelf, $25 Arduino Uno and a $15 Arduino Motor Shield.